that's besides the point. This deck is so much fun. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I got a deck profile on Kozuki Odin. This is my custom Kozuki Odin leader that I made. You can check him out on my shorts. I have a bunch of custom cards that I've made on my YouTube shorts, but that's besides the point. This deck is so much fun. I honestly think this is actually my favorite deck to play right now in OP01, and I gotta give a big shout out to Moon Men TCG. If you guys don't know Maximilian Fay with the Moon Men, you should definitely go subscribe, check him out. He's got great One Piece card game content, and he hooked me up with this deck profile that I modified a little bit to make it more my style and put some of the cards that I really like in it, but the backbone of this thing is his idea, so I gotta give him props on that go check them out if you haven't subscribed to my channel it'd be really cool if you did and let's get into this deck profile so this is the leader kozuki oden um basically once per turn you can discard a wano country or a land of wano it's called and untap two of your dawn so really good you can get a lot of extra dawn to play with um if you sequence your stuff right and there's things that search you cards and you have cards in hand so you kind of are able to abuse that skill a little bit but let's get into the deck i'm playing for momonosuke momo's really good he's uh similar to bonnie you pay one to play him and then you pay one to tap him search top five for a land of, land of wano and add it to your hand, which is great because you need Wano's in your hand to discard for your leader effect. There's also a lot of really good Wano country cards in this deck. Everyone has a lot of value. So uh, let's get into those. Of course, Cat Viper. I'm only playing three Cat Viper. I just need a little room for other space. I do like playing four Cat Viper. It's a really, really good card, but um, you have a lot of other things that rest cards. So you don't always need Cat Viper as much um in this deck you play for okiku's okiku is amazing best card in op01 her and robin i think they're the best there's just so much value in these cards dawn x1 when you swing with her she rests one of your character your opponent's character cards five cost or less so you can rest big blockers you can rest little blockers you can rest character cards they just played you can just deal with their board really really effectively and she also plays for free off Kinemon, which we'll get to. Um, and she stands up off Kinemon. But uh, it's once per turn to rest the cards to make sure if you are swinging with her twice in a turn, which is possible in this deck, that you're not resting two cards. You can only rest one card. Don't cheat. It's not cool. Play by the rules. And then we got four Izu. Izu, I'm playing four of. It's a 2k counter. And if you need to play him to rest one of your opponent's character cards, you can because he rests a four cost on, on play, which is really good. But the 2k counter is usually what you're using him for. Um, He's not really much of a swinging threat, so it doesn't really matter for him to be on board, and you have uh, Okiku to rest bigger cards anyway. And then I'm playing for Raizo. Raizo is amazing. This dude just draws you for no reason. For no reason, he just draws a card. If you have a character card in rest mode, when this dude swings, he counts himself, and then you have two character cards in rest mode, and then you get to draw a card. So you can play Momo, search with Momo, and then swing with Raizo, and Momo's in rest from being in rest, and then Raizo just gets to draw you cards. So really 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 good card i love this dude he's amazing and he has counter power um, and he doesn't need the dawn on him to do that skill so he just draws for no reason and then we got the mvp of the deck mvp of the deck is kinyamon kinyamon is so dang good this guy's crazy i really really doubted him until i played with him and then i was like holy crap this dude is nuts uh, on play, he plays a three cost. So basically you're getting nine Dawn value out of six as soon as you play him, because you're playing a six cost, 6K and a three K, a three cost, which is usually gonna be Okiku. You can also play Raizo. You can also play Inurashi, but I don't really, not totally on board with Inurashi yet. But basically you set this dude up. And then once you set him up, when he swings, if he has a Dawn on him, he stands up a nine scabbards cost three, or less which is wild or akazaya nine is what they're calling it so if you play him and then play okiku and then the next turn you put three dawn on okiku and you swing for eight and then you put one dawn or two dawn on uh kinemon then you swing for eight then he stands okiku up and then you swing for eight again that's three 8k swings right if they have a eustace kid on board they have one of those big kids on board and they're like oh it's gonna be fine right no it's not you pull because you have these two on board right you swing with okiku you rest their killer you swing at eight right and then they have to defend the eight and then you swing with kinemon and you swing for eight and then they have to defend the eight and then you swing with your 
Okiku again and you're swinging for eight, right? And then you can play something and then you can discard untap with your leader and then you put a bunch of doll on your leader and then you swing for what? You have put uh, three on Okiku and two, so that's five. Then you can swing for 10. So that's four threats onto that kid. That kid is not hanging out. You're definitely removing it with this combination. Kinemon is so good though. Oh my God though. All right, and then this was one of the things I added to the deck. I really, really, really like Denjiro. I think Denjiro is insane. This guy is like, he just does what your leader does, but for swinging, that's it. You just put a Dawn on him. He's gonna swing for 8K and stand two Dawn up. So between him, like if you have two of him on board and your leader, you can play a Kinemon, swing with Denjiro, swing with Denjiro, discard off leader, and then play another Kinemon. It's insane. It's There's some really busted crazy stuff you could do, but he doesn't have counter power and he is a five cost. So I feel like, three is fine he's searchable off momo and if you're not going to play him you can always discard him off your leader effect and then just the basic stuff you maybe have seen this in the kid deck it's just like basic supernova stuff bonnie pay one search top five for a supernova she's really good to search beige is your one cost blocker pay one but and then you have a blocker he's a good guy he takes care of his family scratch man he's just a 2k counter just good for defense you rarely ever play him for his skill Killer only playing three, but defends your big cards if you need to and draws your card if you have a board built. And Killer's really good in this deck because you often build a board. I'm playing one, this is probably dumb. I should probably just play four of the killer blockers. But like, if you see this off of life and you know you just have one, like you feel like a god and it's fun and you just remove something. Card's good, it's good removal. Um, but I like swinging into stuff in this deck. So Drake is also really good on play, removes the four cost and then you have a 6K body. And then two Doom Shambhus, uh Law. He's really good, really, really good card. You wanna get your Kiku out of rest mode, you play Law, bounce Okiku to your hand, play Okiku again. You wanna get your Izu counter power back, you play Law, get your Izu counter power back, and then play Okiku to set up for the next turn. It's just so many shenanigans you can do with this man. Um, so he's really, really worth playing. And then I'm playing two Paradise Waterfall because if you block with Law and then you Paradise Waterfall, that's an 8K block and you can stand him up for another 6K block. So you're just, kind of it's a annoying shenanigans and if they swing at okiku for like six you can just paradise waterfall your okiku up or if they swing at kinemon you can paradise waterfall him up just like things you don't want them to swing at you can just pay one and stand it up and give it 2k it's very very strong card i might play more and if you trigger it you can ko a four uh four cost in rest mode which is really good and then two of the big kid you just if you see green like this just or i'm sorry if you see go against blue this card basically just wins the blue matchup blue has to really set up to deal with kid you have to know they know have to know how to deal with it and they have to be preparing to deal with it other colors can deal with it on the point you know they just pivot and they may have the cards that are able to manage this guy but blue is like you have to set up turns before to prepare to deal with this guy so he just wins that matchup there's no reason to not have him in the deck uh i'm not a huge huge fan of him i actually like the seven cost blocker more but i think there's enough cards in the deck outside of the seven cost blocker that can do enough of what you need that card to do basically in other forms of different cards so i play this really just for the blue matchup and i have a shiny card in my hand it's fun anyway that's the deck i hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile um i am a dentist i can't end without doing a dental tooth tip and they are banging on my house again but my dental tooth tip would be oh man they're really banging on my pirate ship. Oh, uh, oranges, citrus. Don't bite into citrus and hold it on your teeth. It's acidic, it can melt your teeth away. Like lemons, don't chew on lemons. It's really bad for your enamel. Um, and if you do, rinse with water right after you get that stuff off your teeth. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you, gozaimasu. Arigato so much, my friendos. Kazoku, I still yow.